It's 12 minutes of FTC. I read 983. Today's a very special day. We got one of our favorite sons from the city. He's been doing great work. Always been involved in the hip hop scene since the 2000s. He's making big waves still. One of our veterans, one of our very own BCN. What it do? What it do? 12, what's poppin'? Appreciate you sliding through now. I seen you in some commercials over the years. I seen you dim and dabbing some different things, but you doing movies now, bro? Damn, straight to it then. Um, yeah, I actually got my first acting role um, with um, Tay Diggs and um, George Lopez, John Cusack. It's supposed to be dropping in September. Um, it's called uh, River Runs Red. And uh, we shot it here in the city. You know what I mean? I got a nice little part. I'm acting like, face like how we are with Tay Diggs. Like, you know what I mean? That's just crazy to me. So how did you even get involved with the film? Um, actually, what happened was um, my man who owns 400, M-Dub, um, and my man Animal's a producer, they came to them um, looking for some artists, looking for some people in the city that would want to get in the movie. And my name came up, and the rest was history. First I was supposed to play a mayor, but then I played a crook. You know what I mean? But it's all good. Well, I know you definitely got to have a song in the movie. I mean, that's what you do. That's your bread and butter, right? Yeah, we're working on the um, the soundtrack now. Um, and I, I believe I may have one or two songs that I, I don't know. Because you know how movies are like, the shit changes last minute. So hopefully, you know, God willing, I'm straight. One thing I like about you is you always done music for the industry. You know, commercial music for release. But you broke away from the mold. You did television commercials. Yeah. Uh, you did music for the University of Louisville. Yeah. So you expanded your catalog beyond just the norm. What made you take those steps? Well, as far as, like, like say, for instance, the university, um, I realized, like, in the city of Louisville, there's no bigger fan base other than, than U of L and, and, and or UK. Um, so I realized, like, shit, I mean, every day, if you got seven, you know, 50 to 70,000 people, however many that holds, and then 20,000 in the basketball listening to you, I mean, you get that many people fast. I mean, and this is a fast world, so you want to be on top of that. So that's one reason I did that. Has doing that song in particular, You Don't Want These Cars, and being involved with University of Louisville, has that helped your, your presence with your social media and your fan base and other things? It definitely has, and it, it, it kind of expanded my, my fan base to where it's more of like a the, the old word pop, because now we pop, but I, I got that fan base, you know what I mean? But there's some other stuff going on with that that I can't speak about all the way, but there's a certain entity that kind of took the You Don't Want These Cars logo, and this is exclusive, like, I ain't never talked about it. They took my actual You Don't Want These Cars, and, Actually, I'll say it. Victoria's Secret took it. And that's how I know it's big, because they took it from me. And, you know, we got some stuff going on with that, but we'll talk about that. Well, B, people only steal good ideas, so feel refreshed. If somebody took something from me, then it definitely has some value. To I want it, so. the money. I want the money. Now, you know, over the years, a lot of artists, they evolve. And there are times in your creative space where you might know that you're making good music, but you might not be feeling what you're doing, if that makes sense to you. Where are you at in your creative space right now? Are you comfortable and loving everything that you're producing lately? Yeah, no, because I feel like I don't ever want to be complacent because I've done that. But my problem was, I, my homie told me one day, he was like, bro, you just gonna let this music just die in your hard drive? And I'm like, damn, but then I, I go back and some of the records that are coming out on my new album, Seven, it's a nice little plug right there, but um, some of the records are a year, or maybe even two years old. So I'll, I've always felt like I was ahead of my time but I, I just never was releasing stuff. I had so much other stuff going on outside of the music. You know You've mean? been doing this for so long, so take me through the evolution between B Sims 2008 to B Sims 2018. What's the difference in your evolution as an artist? I think life. I think you gotta add on. I had a, I had a kid. I had you know some some uh, and some relationships that I don't want to speak about, but. I've always tried to evolve with the times because music has changed a lot since that era. You know, before it was all about bars. And, and even when I tried it, when I, I was doing the singing thing before a lot of people, and people would look at it like, what are you doing now? You know what I mean? So um, I've always just tried to stay fresh. You know what I mean? Even if I'm not on the scene, I'm still, I'm still rapping. Yeah, we came from an era, especially starting when we talk about the, the mid to maybe even almost the, t the early teen. 2000s, mm -hmm. it was just flooded with a gangster rap image. If you weren't a drug dealer, if you weren't a thug, if you didn't have that type of image, it almost like the industry didn't want to accept you. Now these days, it's wide open. Do you love this new space that we're in in the music industry? 
Yeah, I, I like it because now you can touch people faster. I, I feel like and people, and it's like it's open. Like you could be the the softest dude from the east or the hardest dude from the west or whatever, and people accept it. Like I like I always tell my man Frank, like I feel like I wish I would have grew up in this era because you know what I mean. It's like it's more freedom, and then people. It, you can type in like it's a bad contract, you know what I mean? Like people were signing their life away back then. So I do like it. I like the space then. I, I like some of the young artists out too. Now what about the freedom that you have in releasing content? Because you also started off in the era to where if there wasn't a record label behind me, you wouldn't have a video, you wouldn't have all this push, all this exposure. Now with social media, YouTube, streaming formats, there's no middleman between you and the people. How have you taken advantage of this new era as artist? Um, well, I was up on TuneCore maybe like 2010 or 11. Uh, my man Chris Rich actually put me up on that. And so I always wanted to make sure I had those avenues. Like, I remember some people was handing out deals, digital deals back then. You know what I mean? And nobody knew what the hell it was. Like, we, nobody knew that the, the digital era would take, take off like it did. Like, me personally, I just, all I want to do is just keep putting that music out though. You know what I mean? And now it's so easy, like a click of a button. I mean, my man Twan used to email me beats. Like, not email, he used to actually physically mail me beats. Like, you know what I mean? I had to get the CD in the, in the, in the mail and put it in. Like now, my motherfucker be like, hey, I want you to hear this beat. Okay, got it. You know what I mean? I love it. The new Project 7, there's a song on there called Show Me that I absolutely love. Is that going to be the single? I believe it is, man. I think the people, um, from the people I, I've played it for and, and the reaction I get, and it, it's almost like, it's a, it's, a, it's a different side of me. Um, I've always liked girl records because I just love women, but um, I, I do believe that's the single. What's the meaning behind the title seven? <sighs> that's a good question. There's a lot of meanings behind it. One, um, we can start with, I, I honestly feel like there's like a seven year gap of me having bad luck, you know, I, I in, in music. Then um, my daughter seven at the time, we were born in the seventh month. Um, all my names from Brandon Corday Simmons all have seven letters. And if you look at my chronological order of music, it's my seventh project. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Can we expect a release date? Are you gonna drop it on us? Or do we just kinda just gotta play it by ear? You gonna drop on us at midnight like Beyonce or somebody? What you gonna do? I might, I might, um, I really think, um, within the next couple of weeks, so we talking like, um, middle of May, it's coming. What is the next evolution for the music culture in the city of Louisville? And to append to that, what role do you play in the next level? I think, you know, as far as like, when you look at people like Bryson, you look at Jack Harlow, and you look at like the little cat that just got locked up, I love his shit, um, Belasian. Um, I feel like Louisville artists have, have stepped up that game tremendously. I think now it's on the, the producers, the engineers, the, you know, the, the, the radio people, like, and, and then anybody who has a name, it's time for them to start getting behind it. And I think my role, you know, to me, I think it's, it's, it's to bring real music, to bring the lyrics, and then at the same time fit in with the young boys too. It's, I mean, it's, it's easy to me. Now, there could be some strangers watching this video right now who are seeing you for the first time, hearing about your music for the first time. So, how can people listen to your music? And if I was a first time BCM listener, what would be the first song of yours you want me to listen to? Oh, man. I, I get the most um, response out of my very first project, which was Sim City. And I, I mean, to this day, people inbox me, people talk about it. Um, I would say listen to maybe the intro on that CD because that's like the first me that you get that people ever seen, and you you can hear the home good, you can hear you know the direction of where I was trying to go and everything. So I would say that, and then because people hear Rope Dope and Rope Dope really wasn't me, you know what I mean? It was it was kind of like a manufactured song, but it did what it did. So going back to my first question, where could people go back? If they want to follow the entire catalog from BCM from back then up till now, how can um, they keep up? Uh, I'm actually going to re-release all of the, the the projects. Like there's some on like remember that Piff. I mean there's stuff on there, um, and then I, I'll probably 
you know, get a new website and just put the old content up. But right now, I just want people to see the, the, the new the new evolution. Well, BCM, I appreciate you sliding through Real 931. It's been a pleasure. Much success. Man, I appreciate it, baby. And I know Seven's going to be a banger. If I could do anything about it, whew, that show is going number one. Man. Hey, seven songs, 12. Let's go. It's all about the numbers. That's right. <laughs>